Hello, my name is Mike Saunders, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about leak detection uh, and some of the challenges and some of the, uh, uh, I guess, options available on the market uh, today uh, with regards to leak detection. Um, the first thing I want to kind of give you a little bit of background um, and some of the, uh, the impact, the econ economic impact of leaks in supermarkets specifically. Uh, and I've got an example. If you take a supermarket chain with about 100 stores, and if you've got about 3,500 pounds uh, refrigerant in each store, assume it's 404A, uh, and a conservative leak estimate of, say, 20% a year, that's about 700 pounds per store. And if you just look at the cost of the refrigerant alone, that's looking at almost a half a million dollars in just refrigerant cost alone. That doesn't even take into account all the disruptions in the service technicians in the store, the multiple calls to identify and repair leaks. So leaks can be a significant cost impact on the operation of a, of a store. And not just uh, you know, from a refrigerant standpoint, but you also got to think about the, uh, the economic in impact on the equipment. If a store is operating uh, with, when it's low on refrigerant, the equipment in the store, the compressors and other components, are stressed. Uh, the temperatures tend to run a little higher, they're less efficient, so the longevity of the equipment is reduced. And also the energy uh, impact as well. When you run a, a refrigeration equipment uh, low on uh, refrigerant, it tends to run less efficient. So there's a dollar amount uh, with just the power consumption is going to go up as well. So that's, that's one aspect of it. But then there's also the direct aspect. Uh, with le leaking about you know, uh, 700 pounds of refrigerant a year, there's a, there's a CO2 equivalence impact on, on the atmosphere. Uh, that calculates out to about, um, about 124 uh, metric tons of CO2. And there's many uh, calculators on the EPA website that, that can kind of convert that for you, but that's equivalent to about 24,000 cars uh, on the road. Um, so that's just the impact due to, to the direct refrigerant leakage. The EPA has established guidelines and regulations, uh, the Section 608 of the Clean Air Act, uh, that puts rules and guidelines around how much refrigerant can be leaked and some of the things that uh, uh, technicians and other uh, people uh, should do with respect to, to leaks. Some of the key elements, uh, they talk about uh, the technician certification, uh, refrigerant um, recovery and, and, and recycling uh, equipment, uh, refrigerant leaks themselves. Currently there's a, there's a limitation of 35%, so if equipment leaks more than 35%, uh, you have to go in and, re and, and make repairs. There's restrictions on the sales, uh, or they actually they can control how much refrigerant uh, is, is produced. Uh, major record keeping requirements. Uh, they've got a lot of paperwork and, 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 and things that, 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 are, that technicians and others have to file. Disposal requirements of refrigerant after it's been used, reclamation, and, and also a lot of safe practice uh, guidelines as well. But there's a proposal that's on the table uh, right now that is going looking at expanding the Section 608. Today it's focused around um, the CFC, but now they're looking at uh, expanding that to HFCs. Uh, and some of the key elements there are lowering the leak rate threshold from 35% down to 20% uh, on equipment that has more than 50 pounds of refrigerant. Uh, that would be for uh, commercial refrigeration. And for even comfort cooling, cooling they're looking at reducing it from 15% to 10%. Um, they're also going to require uh, leak detection, um, either continuous monitoring devices or regular inspections. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, about the, the continuous uh, monitoring, but there's automatic leak detection uh, that would help satisfy that, that requirement. Another um, requirement that they're, gonna, that they're discussing and including is equipment that leaks more than 75% refrigerant in one given year, if it leaks that two consecutive years, 75%, two consecutive years, that equipment has to be uh, decommissioned or mothballed. There's also a couple other requirements uh, about the size of containers for automotive uh, refrigerant that can be sold uh, without uh, certification, and then also record keeping for technicians, uh, and like I mentioned, expanding also the requirements from a CFC also to the HFC. So now I'm going to talk briefly about some of the different technologies available that would satisfy that uh, continuous leak detection requirement. There's uh, what we call an active, a passive, and an indirect. Uh, the first one's an active. Um, it's what I call a sniffer technology. It's basically a unit that um, would sit in a supermarket and you'd run tubes 
to the different zones throughout the supermarket where you, or, or other facility where you want to detect the, lift, the refrigerant leaks. There's a pump that pumps the air back to a, to a central uh, sensing unit, uh, and then if a, a leak is detected, then an alarm could be uh, sent out and notify uh, the user. The other way is, a, is what I call a passive, and these are devices that you would place in the different locations of the supermarket. The air just diffuses through them. It's an infrared technology for the sensing element, uh, and you would just basically wire those back to a central controller. So you can place as many of these passive devices throughout the, the facility as you would like. And the last one is what uh, we call an, a, an indirect, and this is looking at the performance of a system, specifically the pressures, the temperatures, liquid levels and such, and monitoring over time the performance of the system. And if it senses changes due to refrigerant leakage, it can notify uh, the operator or the user uh, that you have a, a slow leak over time, so a, a service technician could be dispatched to repair the leaks. Thank you very much.